My name is Catherine and I am from Michaels. Go ahead, turn your cameras on, comment, tell us where you're from in the group chat. We would love to um, see where all of y'all are dialing in from. We are gonna keep you guys on mute just to help with background noise, but if you have any comments, questions, concerns, please go ahead and, and type them out in the group chat and we will make sure that we get those addressed either in the chat or live. Oh, Ohio, Texas, California, Colorado, South Carolina, California, Arkansas. Nice, wow, New York. Oh my goodness, Kansas, Connecticut, North Carolina. Oh, I just saw Charleston, South Carolina. There we go. That's my mom. <laughs> Florida, Pennsylvania, wow. Well, we are so, so thrilled that you guys are joining us today for this cricket class. We know that your time is very precious and this might be your one little break during the day. So thank you so much for joining the class and, and tuning in. We're so excited to always get to share these with y'all and help keep you making, keep you creating. Um, you know, this topic today is definitely gonna be one of my favorites, Infusible Ink. Um, I, it's so much fun um, once you really get the hang of it. So I am so excited to hand this over to the Cricut team. Please don't worry if you're taking notes and you're worried you're gonna miss something, we are recording this. We will make sure that this gets shared out. That way you can go back to it in case you missed anything. So without further ado, I would love to hand this over to Joy and Jenny from Cricut. Thank you, Catherine. Thanks, Catherine. Hi, guys. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so I love seeing smiling faces. So if you're comfortable with putting on your video, that would be awesome. I know that for our safety, we all need to be physically distancing, but that doesn't mean we have to be socially distancing, right? So this is such a great way to get everybody together, um, enjoying some time as a community of makers. And Joy and I are really excited to talk with y'all today about Infusible Ink. Yes, we are super excited to show you all about Infusible Ink. And I hope some of you have had an opportunity to use Infusible Ink in the past. And I am believing that a lot of you haven't touched Infusible Ink or don't even know what it is. My shirt, if I stand up, is an Infusible Ink shirt. And what it means is that the actual ink in the that goes on to the material sinks down into the material. It doesn't lay right on top. So there's a difference between what you would normally use as iron-on or called HTV um, that has a different feel to what it is. So I'm gonna share my screen so that you can see what I'm talking about and uh, kind of give you an overview of what we're working with. So infusible ink is available in sheets and it comes in all different colors and um, some solids, some prints, you'll see all kinds of things. This is a shirt that is made with infusible ink. So when we're talking about what the difference is, it's a very vibrant, vivid color. I gotta, I gotta adjust my position here so you can see. It's a very vibrant, vivid color that sits right down into the fabric. So you can't peel it, it won't flake, it's easily washed, and it lasts a long time. As opposed to something that you might iron on or use an HTV that is adhered on top of your fabric that could come off over time in the wash or could flake or peel. Infusible ink won't do any of that. So, that is our first tip. First tip is that infusible ink and iron-on are two different, two different things. And when we're talking about infusible ink, we're talking about this look right here. And Cricut is usually known for our products being in rolls, but the infusible ink is in boxes. And when you're looking for what infusible ink is all about and how it works together, Infusible ink has this little compatibility badge. So there are two components to what you're doing. You're looking for the sheets in the different colors and styles. And then you're looking for your base that you're going to put your project onto. And you're looking for that compatibility mark. 
at Michael's, you can find white t-shirts in women's sizes, men's sizes, children's sizes, onesies, and then two different sizes of tote bags that are super fun to make. And you can also make some really cool coasters. I wanna catch it so that you can see the light and you can see how fun that turns out. It's a very professional result that only uses heat as the element to make it happen. So today we're going to be talking about, we're going to be using the Air 2 machine and we're also going to be using an easy press. And I don't have this easy press turned on yet because it's going to get very, very hot. And Jenny, did you wanna show a little bit about how people can find infusible ink on michaels.com before we get too far in? Let me share my screen real quick with everybody. You can see. There we go. Okay, Catherine, can you guys see that? Yes, it looks great. Awesome. Okay, so what I've done is I've just gone into michaels.com and up here in your little search bar, you can just type in infusible ink and you can see all the available products that coordinate together. These were all built to work with each other. So we have the infusible ink pens, as well as our bases, which is the canvas bags, coasters, um, onesies, t-shirts, like Joy expressed earlier. And what's so great about this is it's really simple just to click on a product here, and you can even double check yourself by looking for this infusible ink circle. We call that the compatibility mark. But it's kind of old school. Like, do you guys remember like Granimals when you would go get your kids clothing and like this shirt would go with those shorts? That's kind of what this mark does for you. So it makes it super easy when you're looking through all of the different products to make sure that this is a product that will go with your infusible ink project. And you can simply just click down here. Michaels does an awesome job on michaels.com giving you inspiration and showing you different projects as well as even a quick little how-to video tutorial that'll show you how to do the project that you're now looking at that correlates with the product so super great super simple check out michaels.com for the assortment and you can see some of the materials and um, products that joy and i will be talking about today okay Thank you, Jenny. Now I just have to take a minute and figure out if I'm still sharing or if I'm not. I think you guys can just see me, right? Yep, we can see so, your face. Okay. Thank you. So I am going to do um, another little share screen so that we can show you um, how to work within Design Space to pick projects to go with Infusible Ink. So. Design space is where you kind of, once you have your materials and your tools, so tip number one is that we're looking for infusible ink. Tip, tip number two is that we're looking for that infusible ink badge so that we know we have the right transfer sheets and the right blanks. And tip number three is looking at, or we showed tip number three, that was our easy press. But tip number four is how to find our designs in design space because Cricut has loaded a ton of things in design space. When you purchase your Air 2, Maker, or Joy machines, it's going to prompt you to, cut, to log in and register at design space. So the first project I want to show you is a coaster because the coaster is going to take a little bit more time to heat. So I'm gonna come right down here to infusible ink and we sort things so nicely and it makes it easy to find things. So I'm gonna type in coasters and I know Father's Day is coming up so I thought it might be fun to make something for dad. So this is what we call a make it now project which means that all of your instructions, everything that you need, all your tips for help, the exact images that are used in the design are all listed right here. And I can click this button and say, make it. Um, we're gonna save the other project that I had going, but I can't remember what I had in there. So I just save it as something <laughs> and we'll okay. save that. The good thing is that design space will keep you from um, losing anything in your, in your program. Um, 
So now here, as I hit make it, I get, it goes right to the mat, exactly what's gonna happen. And um, when you're using an ink, it's going to, you need to be able to um, iron the opposite way. So you have to click the mirror button. And that is one of our tips too, because I have done this over and over again, <laughs> where I forget to hit that mirror button. And then we're going to hit continue. And I have no idea what this blue squiggle is right here or where it came from. So we're just gonna work around that. Um, I'm connecting to my machine and I have um, several, of the, several different machines on here. And as that connects, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to, um, to show you our desktop. So Joy, real quick, just to clarify for everyone, when we click the mirror button inside Cricut Design Space, that simply flips your image over, right? You're literally mirroring the design, mirroring the font. Because when you lay this down on top of your project, you want it to read correctly from right to left. Yes. So anytime you're flipping your material over, you're gonna wanna click mirror. You do the same thing with our Cricut Iron-On HTV as well as Infusible Ink. Yes. Okay, so now I'm in the materials section. I'm going to choose under iron-on. I was just there. They put it in alphabetical order for you, so that always makes it harder for me to find. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I've got all that ready. So I'm going to switch my, sheens, my screen sharing so that you can see what I'm doing over here with the actual machine. So now you should be able to see that I have my Air 2 machine set up. I've got a piece of the infusible ink already cut. Now, I want you to see something. You can see how vibrant and bright and vivid the colors are on the outside of the box. But when you pull the material out, it's going to look very dull. Don't worry about that. The heat, as you apply the heat, that's when you're gonna get that color to release and make, it, make everything look very vibrant and beautiful. So don't be alarmed if that color looks a little bit on the dull side for you. So I've got my um, piece of material already cut, I'm gonna go this way, to the size that I need. And I do this just because I like to conserve the material. And uh, my Air 2 is saying, I'm ready for you. So I've got my mat right underneath. And I'm using a light grip mat. You can use your standard grip mat your, or your light grip. I kind of tend to use the light grip a little bit more. So we're going to put that right in there. And now the machine's going to have the C turn up. And that means I can go ahead and cut. So we'll get that cutting. And then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what you need to do to your um, coaster to get your coaster all prepped and ready for receiving the art. So now the coaster starts out just as a blank coaster and it has that shine on it already. And you want to use just one of those little um, alcohol wipes that you can get in packages. I like these in packages to keep in my craft room because then they don't dry out. You could also just get um, a little rubbing alcohol from your bathroom, bathroom if you needed to. But this just takes off any grease or marks from your fingers. And I'm just going to set that over here to the side. And um, if you don't do that step, it's not the end of the world. But there could be potential that the ink doesn't stick to the full surface because you had some oils or something that were on your hands. So once you've kind of cleaned it off, you want to just touch the sides of it as you go along. Now, our next, our next big tip is really in weeding. And I want to show you that when you're working with infusible ink, you're cutting with your, so with iron-on, you're used to flipping over your iron-on and putting it designed down. But with infusible ink, you've done the mirror. And when you go to weed this, your weeding experience is actually rather on the delightful side. 
because it's not very hard to do. It's like a little bit of a crack and peel. It'll make a little bit of a weird noise. But everything will just come right off. And this is a different design that I pre-cut just so I can have, have something easy to show you and leave it. But it's a stiffer paper. So it just releases right off. And this, in this one, you're leaving the design that you want to put down on the back or paper. Because when I go to apply this, I would turn this over and then heat it. And can you see that's two hands forming a heart? That's kind of a cute result. And our piece is done here. So we'll take that out. And you can see it's got, well, let me take it off of here before I talk about how many, all the little detail. Remember, turning your mat over and releasing your material is a lot easier to do. At the same time, my easy press behind me is reminding me it's about to turn off. I'm gonna go just hit that button real fast because you want your easy press nice and hot to do the coaster. When you're working with the coaster, it, um, you have to heat it at 400 degrees for 240 seconds, which is actually a long time. So I'm doing this project first so that we can let it cool. And then by the end of the class, I'll be able to show it to you without burning my fingers. Now, you might also say, Joy, you're gonna need some tweezers or something special to get all these little letters out. And you really don't. You can just kind of crack it and these pieces are gonna come right off. Now I'm doing this without paying complete attention to my lettering here, but the little pieces will stay on the inside, the ones that you want, and the other pieces will come right off. So I have my coaster all set and ready. Now I have one prepared behind me so that I don't have to spend too much time weaving this for you, but I do wanna show you, you would weed your whole project I do want to show you a little trick though that I've kind of figured out in doing these. I like to take a pair of scissors and cut, and this is kind of that, if you took the face mask class, this is something that you do in sewing. You just kind of make a lot of little slits and that's gonna help me use this adhesive as a tape to hold down my design onto the coaster as I get ready to put that under the the easy press. So now imagine it's all weeded. I would turn this over right on top of where I've cleaned off my surface and then using my best ability to line everything up, now I can take those little pieces that I cut and use those as tape to hold this right around, all the way around the coaster. Now, when you're using your easy press, one of the most important things, there are, there are a couple of things that are really cool about the easy press, and I'm gonna show you a few of them on this one. With the easy press, you can set your temperature, you can set your time. It has a silicone base that holds the whole press so that your table doesn't get hot, things don't get ruined. This is a nine by nine easy press, and it's different than an iron in that the plate gets hot all the way across evenly, which is really important for doing infusible ink. Now I have a smaller one that's already set up behind me, and you do have a little bit of a stacking order that you need to set up. So when I heat this, it's going to heat upside down, and I wanna put a piece of um, cardstock underneath so that it doesn't, uh, no ink or anything will get onto my easy press mat. And over behind me, I have an easy press mat set down as the surface that I'm gonna put this on. And then within your material, you're going to get a piece of butcher paper and you're going to put a piece of butcher paper on top. So I'm gonna change my sharing screen here real quick and we're gonna step away into the back of the room here. 
So hopefully you can see me and you can see, oh, and Eugene has joined us. So I have this, this is a smaller six by seven easy press and it's set to a 400 degree temperature with 240 seconds. I have an easy press mat on the table, piece of cardstock, my coaster with the best dad ever and the tape already set down. And then I'm just going to put parchment on top and I'm going to take this easy press, set it right on top and start my timer. And we're going to let that sit. 240 seconds is a little bit of a long time. So when we hear it beep, we'll take it off. But imagine that I've just taken a pizza stone and put it in an oven for 240 seconds. When that's done, I'm not going to want to go in and touch it right away. So I'm going to pull that over to the side. And then when that cools off, we'll go release it and show you what that looks like. So you can see how easy it is to run something through the Air 2 machine with the transfer sheet and, um, and get that great design. So now so I think we, we should- a quick question okay. on the chat. Um, so the temperature was at 400 degrees, correct? You had walked away, so it was a little hard to hear. Yes, 400 degrees, 240 seconds. And I'll show you how the heat guide works in another minute where you can go online and find the heat guide and find exactly what you need to set temperatures at. But before we do that, I kind of want to, I want to show you a few other projects and get my other easy press heated up. Sorry, I'm going to step away for one second while I plug it in. So what's great also about the Easy Press is we have it available in three different sizes for all of your projects. So we have a small six by seven, a medium size nine by nine, which is the one I think Joy is using today. And then we also have a large 12 by 10, which is great. So depending on what size project you're doing, it makes a really easy application because that plate at 400 degrees will cover your entire project. So you only have to press down one time. Right. Joy, right. Joy and Jenny, can you talk a little bit about, um, we're getting definitely some really great questions on kind of heat press versus iron. Could you go into that just a little bit? Sure. sure. So, the great, so the great benefit about the Cricut Easy Press is you're talking about a dry plate that is never intended to be wet. Like your iron has little holes for steam, kind of like Joy mentioned before. Also, your traditional iron that you have at home that you iron your shirts with, that actually does not have an even heat plate. So if you like flip your iron over, the center of your iron gets the hottest, but then the outside portions of the iron do not maintain the same level of heat. So Cricut went through a very vigorous engineering program to work out a plate that would evenly heat to 400 degrees to edge to edge, right? So that's going to make a more easy application as well as a guaranteed consistent application because if you have hotter areas in the middle and lighter areas on the top, your ink is actually going to be different levels of saturation. So a lot of chemistry, a lot of engineering, and the Cricut Easy Press is absolutely the best way to ensure that you're going to have an even release of your ink on your project and the type of project vibrancy that you're going to want to see. Oh, that's a great question. Someone asked, is it better to invest in a larger heat press? That way you have available for multi-projects. Yeah, that's, that's a great idea. I think it depends on what you'll be doing. If you think you're going to be doing a lot of those little customized coasters that um, Joy is doing right now, your 12 by 10 easy press might be a little large and cumbersome to work with a tiny area, but it's totally possible and doable. Just be super careful because like we said, that, that heat plate is pretty hot. <laughs> It does get hot. Okay, thank you, Jenny. Sorry, I had to, my, um, my plug that I was going to plug this into just sort of butts out on me. So I got a new spot. So we are going to, um, what I'd like to do is go ahead and make a t-shirt so that you can see how the t-shirt is made. And we'll do it with that same, I love you hand, the hard hands. And um, 
and I'm going to use the triangle brights infusible ink sheet. And what I want what I want you to be able to see is how how that changes when you take it out of the box and what comes with the box in it. So let's go over here. I'm, you know what else I'm going to do, Jenny? I need to check. I think my Easy Press just dinged. So here's a couple of good questions. If you did invest in that larger um, Easy Press, could you press like four coasters at once under the the, the larger Easy Press? Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. You absolutely can. Okay. So, um, so I just took that one off and I don't think I'm sharing a screen at all. So let me get you back over to Design Space so that you can see what we're making. So this is the hands in the shape of a heart. And we're gonna go in and customize this particular project. This is the one, this is one that I have saved. Um, I have two different versions and on here Remember how I told you you could put different things on designs in your canvas, but then just by pressing this eye, you can see one or another. And I had thought about using the one with the little hearts, but when I did, I couldn't see from one color with pattern on it as well as I had wanted the design. So I went to this solid one and it made it a little bit easier. So we're going to go ahead and hit the make it button. And I know that the sizing is already correct. And I am just gonna hit continue so that we can go over to the desktop over here and you'll be able to see um, all of the materials that are inside the box and then how that comes out. So um, actually we'll just show you going back down here to press to choose that iron on infusible ink transfer sheet. We'll just get it all set and it's ready to go. So I am going to switch my pieces here and we'll go to the desktop. Hopefully I, got, I don't make you guys too uh, seasick going back and forth between all these things. <laughs> okay, and now we have our desktop. So here's my infusible ink box and when I take my product out, you'll see that it comes in a black like baggie. And that is so that no light gets onto the product. And I would suggest saving the black baggie because after you take the product out, I put it back in there so that it doesn't you know, get exposed to any light or anything. Okay, so this particular one is going to come with two sheets that are 12 by 12. One thing that you do want to make sure of when you're using um, infusible ink is that your hands are washed and dry. So this is going to have two sheets of the triangle brights in it, and it's going to come with two sheets of butcher paper. It also comes with a little fabric that I can use as a test sheet. And um, it gives me instructions to go to help.cricut.com if I need any extra help. It also comes with a silicone packet. I always recommend making sure that gets into a proper trash can so that your little ones or animals don't get into that. Okay. Oh, Joy, so a now really I'm using... question since you... Oh, sorry. Since you showed that fabric square, is there something special about the fabric um, that kind of helps uh, work with this infusible ink? Yes, yeah, so when you're purchasing the blanks, you want to make sure that you're purchasing the fabric that, that will accept the ink. So when you're heating the ink, you're actually creating the ink to move into a gaseous state and then the material that is, that is accepting that gas has to be the right type of material. And that's why you need that compatibility blank on the products so that you're getting, so that you're gonna ensure that the um, transfer sheet is going to stick right where you want it to when you heat it up. 
Now, something that's important to just note is that infusible ink will not work on a 100% cotton material. It does need to be um, the right compatibility with the product. So I've already, we've already got our design set up and we'll go ahead and cut this. And you can also, this is a good time to look at the difference between that sheet and how this is going to turn out. You can see how dull this is and how bright we're gonna end up with this project. So I'm gonna take the um, t-shirt out of the packaging. Cutting. Now there are some little bits of sandwiching that you do need to do as you're preparing your materials and your infusible ink so that you're not letting color bleed through one side to the other. So I'm going to show you how to make that sandwich with the shirt. Okay, and just hit an exit. Now I'm going to close up the machine to kind of get it a little bit out of the way for us. And again, turning this over to release the material off of the mat. Joy, we just got a really good question. Can you layer infusible ink? You can. The, um, the thing is that when you're doing that, you are going to want to layer in your designing process and then apply the heat once so that you keep all of the color. I'll show you, I'll show you a little bit more about that in our last project so that that makes sense. But I have a nice big mat that we're gonna use for a t-shirt. And this is an easy press mat. And then I'm going to place another easy press mat on the inside of the t-shirt. And I'm also going to put a piece of cardstock down. Now, if you remember, we did that on the coaster as well. And we did that because we didn't want the um, color to bleed through onto the mat. That's just really a way to keep the color from going onto your actual t-shirt. So get that squared away. Make sure I'm kind of straight underneath the camera there for you. So now I have my t-shirt all set. I want to just take my easy press and put it on here for about 15 seconds just to warm up and get rid of any wrinkles or moisture in the t-shirt. And then get this in a better spot for you. So here's our piece that we've cut. And I'm gonna cut around it. Can you see or did this freeze? We can see. Hey Joy, um, yes? wasn't that a great question? She wanted to know, did you wash the t-shirt first? That's a really good question. Somebody must be a sewer. You do not need to wash the t-shirt first, which is nice. And the thing is that when you get to your washing instructions, you just, um, I feel like my screen sharing has frozen because you're not seeing what I'm doing. Hmm. Or I'm not seeing what I'm doing. Did you see that I just cut that out? No, we just can see the, the white t-shirt. Okay, so let me just do a stop share and then we'll restart it really fast because um, this is where all the good stuff happens <laughs> and I don't want you to miss it. You don't so miss let's the magic. Try it I know, all the fun parts. And that's my little easy press turning off. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now this is what we just cut out and I am going to weave this again really quickly. Now this is a good design because I don't remember if I actually hit the mirror when I was speaking through the design space part of this. And that's okay because this one has symmetry to it. But that is one of our tips. Remember to do the mirroring. Okay. 
I just love weeding on here because it's really so fast and easy. That comes up, that's our design. So we're gonna flip it over and I'm gonna use the center of the V-neck along with the fingers here to kind of center where I want that design to go. And this release paper is tacky. That's why I could use it as tape around the edge of that coaster so that will keep it on there. I have my Machine set, let me make sure I've got the right temperature and time. So it's 385 degrees for 40 seconds. And I wanna make sure that the entire design, sorry about my head, is under there and hit that green button. And what that'll do is that will start counting down the time on the easy press. And that's what's so good about this. You don't have to think about how much time it's taking, you sort of just kind of rest, make sure you've got everything lined up. And then. So there's a question here, Joy, while you're applying heat that says the white shirt seems a little see-through and I totally get that guys, right? Like we don't wanna walk around with <laughs> white t-shirts that seem see-through. I think you'd be surprised when you put it on. I think because the way Joy's camera angle is on the white shirt, it looks a little bit more transparent than what it is in real life. That said, if you're uncomfortable with a white shirt, we also have gray, um, Cricut Infusible Ink gray shirts that are compatible with the ink as well. And you can find those on michaels.com too. The thing we have to remember is because we're dealing with an ink, you can't have, for example, if you had a black shirt and you applied ink to it, you're not going to see the ink. Oh, I took away from the magic, Joy. That was beautiful. That's okay. <laughs> so I just, I thought we could see, were we seeing each other at the same time or did I just do that too soon? <laughs> I could see what you were doing. Awesome. I just lifted it right up and you can see how beautiful that turned out. And if you remember how dull that sheet was and how bright that is. That's pretty cool. Okay, so that is a t-shirt. And I agree with Jenny, I am wearing one of the t-shirts right now. And I just will sometimes put, oh here, let me do, let me stop screen sharing for a minute. And then you can see it. Um, but I tend to be like an undershirt wearer. So I just put another shirt underneath and I don't have any problems with it. So this is an infusible ink shirt that I just put like a little candy underneath. Here is another really great question. Could you reuse that same image to transfer to another t-shirt? Here's the thing. Let me pull that out of the trash. So that image, oh, that image, all the ink is gone. That's how well it transferred. So really all that ink that was on there went into that gaseous state and then attached to the fabric. So you, it's, it doesn't have any, anything left, it's exhausted. But um, with, with our markers, when you use the markers, you can sometimes use them twice. So that turned out cute. Okay, so now let's do I have something already set up. I was gonna take you through the process in design space, but I think what, um, what's a little bit better to see is how the application actually happens. So we're gonna go back up to the overhead. And I have my base sheet. And um, this is going to be for a tote bag. Now, if you recall, I put that piece of white cardstock in the center of that t-shirt to protect my mat, but no color came through, so I could use that over and over again, no problem. So I have behind me, um, my tote bag has been sitting with a heavy book on top of it because I have everything all ready to go. And what's gonna happen here is this is a bag that's gonna go into the shape of a heart that says standing together while six feet apart. 
but with each of the different layers, I cut, I cut a different color. So each word had a different color. And I went to put it back together. I went to put it together. And what you have to be very careful of when you do this is that you're cutting close to that wording so that nothing has an overlap. So you can see where the R is close up in that G. And um, so I just wanted to make sure that I went through and had everything near, near to one another. And I also needed to make sure that this is going to fit under my nine by nine easy press. So, so that's down. Now I'm gonna take my easy press and this, the temperature is the same. Sorry, concentrating and laying. The temperature is the same between these two. And you know what I've noticed that I've been doing is forgetting to put my parchment layer my parchment paper layer on there. And you do need, you should put parchment paper on top of your transfer sheet because it's easy for the transfer to the gas to come up and stick to your easy press. And if that happens, you do ruin your easy press. So, um, you know, I'm fine. I'm kind of just doing it, but you really should. And the parchment paper, that butcher paper comes in your in with your paper so don't don't forget it on the side like I did. Joy, you are a cricket rebel. I live in a little dangerous <laughs> right there. Because <laughs> when this picked up it could it could be dangerous because as these all come up that color could transfer like I really don't want it to. But how cool is that? Oh you guys didn't get to see it. My thing froze. It frozen. Oh y'all this I is the technology, like technology is just sucking oh. the magic. <laughs> okay, let's try that again because when you when you come over to this, you're gonna be like, that was magic. Even I am really happy with these results. Oh, that looks amazing. Doesn't that look cool? So that that turned out really beautiful. And it doesn't smudge, smear, it's not wet. You can see that all that color came off of each of these. It's not wet, I'm not gonna wreck it. It's really part of the material. So it's, it's really cool to think about all the things that you can make. So let's go check our coaster and see how we did with the coaster. Because it's warm. It's warm, but it's not too, too hot. So this is one that if you have um, children who want to watch you working, I think I sometimes I get nervous that my cat is going to jump up there or something. So this is one where you do want to take some extra precaution and make sure nobody's getting onto anything. But we can see all that color is gone. And look at how cool that is. Oh, that looks so good. Isn't that amazing? That's great. And this is a ceramic coaster. We also have the um, aluminum coasters. I don't know what I did with everything now. Oh, here we go. There so Joy, are, there's a, a question here. It says, um, how did you, oh no, I've lost it. How did you print the words for the tote bag in different colors? So Joy basically okay. went into design space and did each word as its own cut. So then she could apply whatever color material she wanted as she cut each sheet. Yes. So each one of these, so do we have time? We have a little bit of time. I could go into design space real quick and show you how I did that. So let's, uh, let me stop sharing this one and let me get over to design space. And while Joy does that too, when you guys jump into design space, you can go in there and just search around and play. What's great is you can click projects and then you can type in infusible ink in the categories and it comes up with all the different types of infusible ink, pre-made make it, what we call make it now projects, which are simple clicks. 
and you can see all the different things you can make or you can customize and do your own like Joy's done here for the three projects we did today. Right, so this one, I was in my canvas and I went over to images. And the nice thing is that in the, um, in the images sets, we have, we have things that are free. So um, I just went to the free images. And if you scroll down, like each week we add free things in here. And so that, that image that I used for the bag is one of our free images. I have to scroll down kind of far to find it. Um, it's in this range. It's gonna be one of these hearts with the words in it. A little further down. So see, this is where, if you get into design space and you just start looking around, that's when you're gonna find cool things. If anybody sees it, holler out. Here we go. So this, I would click on that and then click insert image. This is gonna go into that canvas that I already had set up, which is not a big deal because I'm just gonna make the hands in the shape of a heart. I'm gonna turn that eye off so we don't see that. And this will just, for some reason it's taking a few minutes, but we'll see our design come in here. And from here, I can show you how to cut those different layers. There he is. So if I just hit right, and this is exactly what I did. I just hit from here, make it. Now I didn't want to use red, yellow, blue, green, which is totally fine. I just used the colors that I wanted. And I can see, okay, for the standing, it's gonna need to be a, a three inch piece by about nine inches. And then I take whatever color I want and put that onto my mat and then I cut that out. Now remember, it's a word. You tip, one of our tips, you need to hit that mirror. So that makes it go around. And the other thing that I found out is that you need to remember to do that each time with each one of these. So imagine I just cut all of these. That's what the, all this is. So, um, so let me end the sharing. And then um, all you'd have to do is just crack this part off and just weed this right out. And then you have all those words. And that's why I cut the words kind of close to each other and then like a puzzle, kind of put the pieces together. But it's not a hard puzzle because you, you can kind of, you can look back at the picture and then you can see how easily they go together. Does that help answer that question? That was great, Joy. So I love this question, and I don't know the answer, but I'm going to find out. It says, what do you do with all the fantastic crafts you guys make on these Zoom classes? It would be fun to randomly give them to your Zoom watchers. I think that's an excellent idea. And Joy, you and I should talk about how, how we could make that happen. <laughs> yeah, because I'm happy to give away things. I love giving away things. Yes, yeah, so so maybe uh, we could, I don't know. Can we do that from yeah. here now? We'll or? To, Catherine, we'll talk with you on stuff like that. We're not sure what we're allowed to do. <laughs> Catherine's probably texting us, stop. <laughs> no. I, think, I think it is a really, really great idea. And I thought we can find a way to figure out how to make that happen. Thank you for that really great idea. That's awesome. Oh, uh, so I, you guys have been reading the questions. I think I've, I have crafted everything. I must say, I really enjoy this bag. I didn't think it would turn out this cool, but I just love it. That's super cool. So Joy, I did, just so you guys can see too, we talked about it earlier and I've noticed some comments as well. When you get your infusible ink sheets that are rolled inside of your box, you can see on the packaging all the different designs that are inside and it looks super bright out here but then when you pull your sheet out it looks muted right so don't be disappointed because i used this muted looking sheet of infusible ink which wasn't you know 
bright and cheery, but when I applied it to the shirt that I made for my niece, let me show you guys, I was, it turned out so bright. I just love that. Yeah. So cute. Yeah. So I see we have questions about markers. I guess that will need to be a future class because that's yeah. a whole class in and of itself. <laughs> I think so. I think people would be really excited. To They're fun too. Class. Yeah, I think so too. Okay, so somebody did have a question earlier about layers and, um, and I didn't talk about that yet. So um, basically, if you wanted to have multiple colors, in your design, you would, um, let's say, let's say that you wanted, we know this is the word apart, let's pretend it's something else, but you wanted a piece to be in here. You would cut two of these. So I would cut one in the color that I want and one in another color. And because this is sticky paper, I can take the other piece from the other and put it on here. So if you think about this transfer sheet, as sticky paper you can also like I don't throw this away if it's in a if I do a big design and I can I'll, I'll keep this backer paper because I can use this as a um, as a way to put things together but essentially with the two colors um, of what I did here you're you're putting you're putting them together now the question may be and may actually be can you layer color on top of color. If it is, it, it's a little trickier because remember it's a gas and then they're coming together. And when you reheat something, the other gas will come up and they'll kind of mingle with each other and it can come out to be the color you want or it could come out to be something totally bizarre that you were not anticipating. So you kind of, this is why you have that extra little piece of um, fabric. Play around with how does it come together when you're playing with it and and see what you come up with the other question may be can you layer um like a, the the iron on and infusible ink and i yes you can just um you want to think about your order and you want to think about which is going first and second and what's overlapping what um the infusible ink won't transfer on top of the iron on material. So you want to, um, so you want to think about how those layers are coming together. But if I wanted to add um, some iron on, like a glittery heart on top of this, I could, or um, I could have put down the iron on first and then added the infusible ink. The, prop, the, the trick about layering and the thing that you need to practice with Whenever, if I'm gonna reheat this at all, it's gonna turn into a gas again and it's gonna go somewhere and stick to something else. So there are times where if I'm not recovering the whole thing and I just wanted to do something with the heart, but let's say my easy press went off to the edges, I could change the whole look of this whole entire piece by accident, just by reapplying heat. So I think layers and that sort of stuff is definitely advanced. And it's something that you need to think about your design, what you want to have where, and just practice a little sheet, right? You know, do a little practice, see what you like, and then go for it. And then share, share what you made um, on Instagram and use the hashtag Cricket with Michaels. Because Jenny and I and Catherine and all the Michaels folks, we like to go to where that hashtag is and we like to see what you guys are making. Yes, and a couple, there have been a couple dryer questions, and to my knowledge, and correct me if I'm wrong, this is fine in the dryer. Yep. 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 This has been washed. I think, I think we made these shirts last year. This, this shirt I'm wearing was made last year, and I, I have washed and dried. Our instructions are to turn it inside out and put it in the washer and the dryer. You can see what I did with the parchment paper and how great I am at following instructions. <laughs> so you can imagine mine just goes into the washer and the dryer and I don't think it has faded at all. 
Yeah. I think one of the rules, Joy, that we do talk about the most is just try to avoid, avoid using fabric softener. Fabric softener, you know, has a lot of different chemicals in it that can react to the ink in the shirt, just like any other shirt that you would, you would buy off the rack somewhere. If you put fabric softener in it, it can actually degrade the ink that's in the material. Good to know. Yeah. Thank you, Jenny. Um, so we have a couple questions here about, um, do you have classes for beginners? Was there, I think Christine was really kind and answered a class about Cricut Joy that lives on Michael's. If you go to um, online classes on michaels.com, you're able to see pre-recorded classes just like this one. And we really enjoy doing these classes with you guys. It's very engaging. It's awesome for us to see your questions. Um, you guys inspire us and encourage us as a company and a brand to, to be better and make sure that we're doing all the things that help you to create these beautiful and wonderful, valuable projects that we love seeing you make. So we would like to do some more of these classes, Catherine, and I think we've been talking a little bit about that. So yes. I think the answer to future classes is yes. And I think we're working through what that's going to look like. But if you guys just stay tuned in to Michael's, we will let you know when the next class um, we'll be doing. And we'll do some more beginner classes. We can change it up and talk about different machines and design space. That seems yeah. to be a consistent, um, a lot of questions there that we'd be happy to go over. Maybe we just do some little quick 30 minute classes and cover, you know, one project, one application at a time. Yeah, because design space, if you really get com comfortable in design space, you can make all kinds of things come out of your Cricut machine. So definitely we'll focus, we'll help you focus there. Please keep making and please keep sharing. It warms our hearts to see just the most amazing, creative, beautiful projects that you guys are doing. And I, I even enjoy, like mine are mostly fails, um, <laughs> but I love seeing those too, because you know we can't be scared to try new things. And I think sometimes all of this you know, appears to be more overwhelming than it is. So I would just encourage you to keep crafting, keep making, you know, don't um, squash that creativity because you guys are really making the most amazing things. And, and that just inspires us to keep going and keep supplying you with great tools and, and good value in your products to help you create what you want to make. Right. And even if you wanted to make this your first one, best dad ever, it was so easy. And Father's Day is coming up. You can do it for graduates. All these coasters are fun to just have around the house. Anybody that gets their name on, I don't know, I put my kids' names on it, and now I don't have stains on my, <laughs> on my tables. Well, thank you both so much, Joy and Jenny, for this class. We are so excited for the upcoming classes. And like Jenny said, stay tuned. We will be letting you know what those are very soon. Um, definitely seen a lot of interest for design space, so you never know that might be our first one up. Um, and thank you all again for joining us today. We know this is kind of your one little break during the day. Um, we are so, so honored that you will share your time with us. We are doing everything we can to make sure that you're able to keep making and keep creating. And if you need to reach out, please don't hesitate to do so. You know, reach out to Michaels, reach out to Cricket on social media. Um, it, you know, if you need help with anything, just let us know. We are absolutely here for you. Um, and again, just thank you guys so much for everything. This is so exciting to be able to share with y'all. Um, and we hope that you have a really great day. Oh, and also, if you want to sign up for more classes beyond just Cricut and learn new things, michaels.com slash online classes. We have new classes going up all the time. Make sure you're checking back frequently um, and sign up for something really fun because, you know, a lot of us are stuck at home right now. This is a great opportunity <laughs> to try new things. You know, no one will be watching except you can just see everyone helping you through it. So again, thank you all so much. Thank you, Joy and Jenny. Thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you, guys. Our pleasure. Have thank you so week. much. Have a great week, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, y'all.